Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. I'm here with Reggie and his beautiful victory. So we made this plan about a year ago. Reggie is going to complete do a complete wire and rescue on his bike by himself. I'm just going to help him. So I'm going to help him refab the mounts, get proper mounting for the amplifiers, rerun all the wiring, and we're going to upgrade the amplifiers to sound digital. Reggie is doing 100% of the work himself. I'm just giving him tech support, letting him use my tools, and I'm going to tune it. So let me show you a before and after. So that's the before. It's all high quality equipment, but it's just jammed in there and it's a wiring disaster. So we're gonna upgrade to some Evo X amplifiers, some Stinger wiring, and make this thing right. Yeah, I'm tired as heck. Uh, we were here late last night. We delivered two bikes. And then um, we had the time change. So we lost an hour. Um, it's Sunday. Me and Reggie got here at 7.30 this morning. And he's got a basketball game later on. So we got to try and get this wrapped up in maybe three or four hours. Let's do it. Let's get it. Okay, we just started and we already got major problems. There is no way to take the bag off the bike because there's no quick disconnects. And then... We have some sort of splice here on the main power feed wire. And that's no no. That All right, now we gotta rip this out and start fresh. Got Reg working on the template. And give us some more room in the bag. Yep. So that's the old setup. We're gonna cut the new one out of expander PVC. We've got a blank canvas to start with now. So we have our template trimmed out out of cardboard. We have our routing hole and our mounting points. Now we're going to transfer it to a PVC sheet. What's uh, anything we try and put on a motorcycle, we try and make sure it's waterproof. This from Home Depot. So it's like $30 a sheet, half inch, 100% waterproof. We're just going to rip it down on the table saw. And then I'm going to have Reggie uh, copy it with the jigsaw. And then we can go ahead and mount directly to it after we wrap it in trunk liner. Test fit, closes, we just gotta sand the edge. It's a good thing we tackled this project when we did because we have a fire hazard. The drive belt was actually rubbing against the power feed wires. So what really doesn't make sense to me is they tech flex the speaker wires to protect them, but not the power wires. We're gonna reroute them, have them come out this way, use this hole, to keep them away from the drive belt and then route it into the bag. I made the entry hole into the bag larger. That way we have more room to maneuver the wires in. All right, we got two hours in so far. I had to stop for a coffee break. As you can see, I got PVC particles all over myself. We got the power wiring rerouted uh, and protected. The PVC board is cut and being carpeted. We're laying out the placement of the amplifiers so we can map out the wiring. It's best to take your time and figure out where you're gonna mount everything. Make sure you can get to the adjustment knobs of the gain and make sure you can route all the wires properly. This. It's laying out the, the amplifier layout, and laying out the way the wiring is going to run. Take some time to do it now, and then it saves you headaches in the future. 
you can't build a good audio system unless you lay down a really good foundation, make everything serviceable as possible, that you shouldn't have to pull the amp out to adjust the gains. So we're gonna try and set the board up to where we can have it playing, set the gains, and then slide it in and bolt it down. That's, that's what we're trying to do right now. So um, there's a couple of mistakes I wanna address. Like I'm not a big fan of running a circuit breaker on motorcycles. You could do it if you want. It just doesn't make sense to me because there's one circuit breaker in the in the bag and there's three amplifiers. So that means all the amps share one breaker. So if there's an issue with a small amplifier, it's not gonna draw enough current to trip the breaker because it's one breaker for all the amplifiers combined. I like to use one feed going in and then a fuse for each amplifier. So I like to use a three or four way fused block that way, if there's an issue with one amp, that amp draws current on one line and blows one fuse. Uh, the only time we use circuit breakers is if we're mixing two different type, size batteries. We like to hit the circuit breaker. That way we can charge the batteries independently. So um, you could use breakers if you want. It just really doesn't make sense to me and I don't trust circuit breakers. If, if some people say, oh, so you can reset it if there's an issue, there shouldn't be an issue. If you wire it properly, there shouldn't be an issue. And if the breaker trips, you don't want to go back there and hit the breaker again. You want to find out what made the breaker trip. So uh, let's finish mapping out this wire. Then I'll show you a quick video of what we did. Okay, we have a nice clean blank canvas to work with, expanded PVC, carpeted in black. Okay, so here's the old setup. So we have a Rockford Prime 500.1 going to the JL sub. We're upgrading that to the Sound Digital Evo X 800.1. So we're gonna have 800 watts RMS, two ohms. Um, so that's a huge increase over the 500.1. Now this is the massive. The Massive claims to have 400 watts by four at two ohms. We're upgrading that to the Sound Digital 1200, which we have confirmed does 300 watts by four at two ohms. And then uh, the Tramps 404, we're upgrading to the Sound Digital Evil X 404. Even though this amplifier claims to have more power, I will 100% guarantee you that the Sound Digital amp completely outperforms it. So we're going up in power and we're actually saving space. Let's get it wired up. Okay, so now you gotta go with a layout that makes sense and this layout makes sense to us. We have the power wire coming in through here into the distribution block, then from the distribution block amplifier one, two, three. Everything's nice and neat and serviceable. Got Reggie set up with the spools of Stinger power and ground wire. No splicing, we're doing full runs. It's just the best way to do it. Already looking better. At first I thought this was a mistake and I was gonna point it out, but then then after uh, talking to Reggie, he explained to me that there's another battery under the tail so this is actually a good thing. So we have a four gauge feed going to the factory ground and then a four gauge feed coming off that going to the rear battery. So it's actually very, very good. So we have the rear battery tied into the factory ground and then our four gauge feed coming off that to the bag. So that's done 100% right. And then there is a four gauge feed that runs to the front battery to the rear battery and then comes off this way to our bag okay i think that's a little better and safer looks better now we're gonna have the wire wire tied there to keep it away from the drive belt making sure all the connections are soldered okay whoever installed this dayton dsp screwed me because they cut all the wires off really short. 
So they eliminated the option for me to go on speaker level in, which I like to do, but that's fine. But that's the problem right there. DSP has a remote input and a remote output. So the red wire is remote in, so that's from the radio into the DSP. The remote out is the blue wire, which goes to the amplifiers. Using that as a turn off delay for the amplifiers, which eliminates pops. So now, if we have a pop issue, we're gonna have to order a new plug for the DSP or try to pin that one. So I cut a couple pieces of PVC plastic, that way I can stack the DSP over the distribution blocks and make it serviceable. Okay, Reggie had 12 gauge speaker wire run into the tweeters. That's definitely nothing wrong with doing that, but uh, 12 gauge is way overkill for tweeter wires. We're gonna scale down the thickness of the wire, that way we make it more manageable and easier to run into the bag, and it'll go easier into our quick disconnects. Plus, I don't like the cap here on the horns, so we're gonna move the cap down the line here in the harness. Okay, got Reggie soldering the PRV horns while I'm over here putting wire furls on the Hertz horns. I'm a big fan of using wire furls, and uh, especially on tweeters and speakers that can take wire furl in. This kit is from Amazon. Um, I buy it all the time that way we go through a couple of kits a week and then I just can control the cost and it always comes in new crimpers so 26 bucks gets you 8 gauge 10 gauge 12 gauge and all the small ones and it just fits beautifully see that you have a nice tight connection without stray strands everywhere Huge difference. All right, we got her finished up. We Red missed the game, but it was worth it. His team still won, and the bike is completely finished. Check out the job that he did. Nice, neat, serviceable. So the fuse blocks are under here. We have the 800.1 running the subs. We have the 1200.4 running the six navs and the fairing and the eights and the lids. We have the 400.4 running the ST25 horns and the PRV horns, Dayton DSP. Nice, neat, serviceable. Quick disconnects for everything. The bag can come off now. Just takes a little bit of time.